Kia ora, good evening. The National Climate Centre yesterday released its climate summary for November, which noted some of Southland's highest levels of rainfall on record. The rep report recorded the region as having received twice its normal rainfall for the month, while Invercargill saw its third wettest November on record. The city saw rainfall on all but four days of the month. The high levels of rain are to blame for a lack of produce from the region's farms, causing what's being referred to as a green drought. The average asking price of a property for sale on TradeMe broke half a million dollars for the first time last month. TradeMe said the average asking price across all property types had increased 27% since November 2009. Among five regions which showed a double-digit year-on-year growth was Southland, which increased by 10.8%. For the first time, building activity in the September quarter reached $4 billion in unadjusted value. It includes $2.5 billion worth of residential building work and $1.5 billion of non-residential. In volume terms, after removing price changes and seasonal variations, building activity increased again in the September quarter, according to Statistics New Zealand. Building works grown for the 10th consecutive quarter and overall building activity volume increased one5 in the September quarter. Invercargill residents will be hitting the beach this weekend not for a swim or a suntan but to dig a hole and stick their heads in the sand. Local organisations have asked the public to join them at Haredi Beach as a form of protest for, for what they say is a lack of action being taken by government on climate change. Most countries are looking at, um, like the US and the EU are looking at reductions of 30 to 40 per cent um, by 2025 and Tim Grocer announced that he only sees a 5 per cent reduction in emissions as reasonable for New Zealand but we're actually one of the largest polluters per capita in the world so I think we're becoming increasingly seen as a, as a bit of a joke and not um, taken seriously in terms of our determination to do something about this issue. And what would you have the government do? Um, I think there's a whole range of different things we can do. There's a lot of potential to move to more uh, renewables. Um, the, we could be making huge changes in terms of transport at the very time when we could be moving to um, um, a lot more public transport and so forth. The government's wanting to build more waterways and that's only encouraging the problem. And how will you be getting your message across on Sunday? Well, it's a, a kind of um, a humorous look at the issue by um, explaining that the government has got their heads in the sand over this issue. So what we're going to do is have a whole lot of people putting their heads in the sand is a kind of protest. And the heads in the sand protest will be held on Sunday the 7th of December at 11.30 at Ariti Beach. Renewing passports online is proving to be a hit with over 300,000 Kiwis taking the option since the launch of adult passport renewals in November 2012. The online service is part of a drive by government to change the way New Zealanders deal with government, governmental departments. The service has saved Kiwis over $7 million in passport fees in two years and New Zealand is the first country to have online passport renewals. More than 70,000 New Zealanders overseas have renewed their passports online. This passport online renewal service is available for adults over the age of 16 and is $10 cheaper than using the paper form. The car park at Farmers in Invercargill was brightened not only by the sun and busy shoppers today but also a bright pink caravan. The New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation's three-month tour of the country came to an end and comes to an end in Bluff tomorrow. Specialist breast cancer nurses are sharing their knowledge and answering questions about breast cancer, showing real-life signs to watch out for and providing education to GPs and practice nurses along their journey. Hands-on displays of breast cancer symptoms and prosthetic breasts to show men and women what a lump feels like are part of the onboard educational material. Well, the reaction's actually been really good. Um, the caravan is the first uh, thing that draws uh, attention to us and um, so that sometimes is an icebreaker for women um, and then they really respond to the information sharing that we're doing. Do you find a lot of people quite nervous to talk about a topic like this? Uh, I think there is a slight tendency to be a little bit nervous or a little bit unsure um, but once uh, they talk to one of the breast care nurses um, that tends to not be an issue at all. What are some of the most common questions that you're being asked here today? Um, 
questions about what to do um, if a lady uh, identifies a breast lump or any changes and what they should do when they identify those sorts of symptoms and just asking questions about general breast health really. Stay with us still to come on the bulletin. It's World Volunteer Day. Car sales hit a new high plus the week that was. Welcome back. New Zealand vehicle sales have already outpaced last year's total sales with a month left to run. In the first 11 months of the year there's been 21% increase to the same time last year with close to 242,500 vehicles sold already. MTA Chief Executive Warwick Quinn says it's anticipated over a quarter of a million vehicles will be imported and sold in 2014. For the month of November new passenger vehicle registrations were up 8% on the same month last year and up 10% year to date. Toyota took the top three places in the new passenger segment for November with Corolla, Yaris and RAV4 selling well. Registrations of used imported passenger vehicles were up 23% in November against the same time last year to more than 11,500 and are 31% on year to date. A series of online videos have been produced to assist learner drivers to pass practical tests. 41 short videos demonstrating all the driving skills necessary to go from absolute beginner to preparing to sit the restricted licence practical test have been released by the New Zealand Transport Association. The series includes three videos for people helping someone to learn to drive, such as parents or friends, that offer tips and techniques on how to be a good coach. There are also five videos specifically about the restricted and full licence driving tests. The new videos are available on YouTube and on the practice website and each video demonstrates a key driving skill for learners and providing tips for them and their coach on how to assess whether they've mastered it or not. Thousands of ordinary people around the country were congratulated today for the extraordinary things they do. International Volunteer Day is an observance day to celebrate the hard work and time given by volunteers in all services around the world. Sharon Rees spoke to one volunteer who gives all of her time to not one, but two services. I could see a greater need in our local community because I'm based from Athol um, and we're quite a wee way away from help, so assistance is good. So hence why St John recently for further education in the medical field. You're a volunteer of both St John's and the Rural Fire, Fire Service. How much time do you put into both of these services? Um, at the moment quite a bit because I'm trying to do my diploma with St John to become an um, EMT ambulance officer. How long have you been a volunteer for? Um, with Rural Fire I think five years in total, with St John about a year and a half. What's one of your greatest achievements as a volunteer? Um, personal growth and improvement and being able to help people that are in need. The satisfaction in knowing that you have helped somebody. How important are these volunteers in the rural services? Huge. We need more. Um, I think there's always going to be an outcry for more volunteers. Um, a lot of, we need some young blood would be good. We see a lack in the younger community um, with work and lifestyle changes. There doesn't seem to be the same influx there used to be. So this is definitely something that you would recommend people to do? Yes, totally. Um, for me, St John, I, I did it as an educational side of things. Now I would honestly love to have a future as an unemployed paid staff member. I love it. And that brings us to a close. We'll leave you now with some of the images that told the stories over the past week. From the news team, have a lovely weekend. Good night.